wine on a Tuesday evening and vlog 20. Hello and welcome to the Nerd Writer After Dark, the only place in the big black ether to hear about the sexy side of high finance. My name is the Nerd Writer, and I'm here to be your guide through the titillating seas of fiscal irresponsibility, helping you in any way I can to get your assets in order, out of order, whatever suits your financial fancy. And I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, the very mysterious Reginald Circumstance. How you doing tonight, Reg? Just fine. What's that you got there, Reg? This, my friend, is a 78 Merlot by Farniente, the same year in vintage, drunk by the senior associates of the Blackstone Group, the same year they acquired the Howard Johnson franchise in 1990. Wow, that is vintage. <laughs> I'm actually drinking a very special bottle myself here, Reg. This is an 89 Pinot Noir by Woodenhead, sent over by the board of Bain Capital. This vintage they drank when Staples Incorporated, one of their very first investments, went public, and it's also the wine that they were drunk off of their gourds on when this picture was taken. Tonight, I want to talk about one of the sexiest figures in the nation, if not the world. I think you know who I mean, and no, I'm not talking about Beyonce or Mr. Circumstance over there. This is a man with both public sector and private sector experience. You guessed it, I am talking about the one, the only, the irresistibly erotic, Mitt Romney. Mr. Romney is currently in contention for the Republican presidential nominee, touted by many as the front runner in that race. Though a weak turnout in South Carolina has many predicting that this might become a strip to the waist, mud wrestling match between Mitt and the improbably nubile Newt Gingrich. Ladies, I know I'm not the only one who wants to see these two sans shirt. But politics is the bag of a different show. Here we are more interested in what Mr. Romney did before he set his sights on the Oval Office, and since the man himself puts his experience at Bain Capital at the forefront of his campaign, I think it's only appropriate that we explain and analyze that experience. What do you think, Reg? I think I'm drunk. Now, those who know me know that there are a few things that make my cherries tingle more intensely than private equity. But what is private equity after all. Well, private equity is an asset class consisting of equity securities in operating companies not publicly traded on a stock exchange. Well, Nerdwriter, hey, that sounds like a lot of gobbledygook to me. Okay, Reg, I think I, uh, <laughs> I think I get your point here. So private equity, or PE, used to be called leveraged buyout, or LBO. It's the practice by which a private equity firm, like Bain Capital, uses a fund of money to buy out a small or underperforming company to flip it for profit. It's like flip that house. You've seen that show? I love that show. Okay, so let's say that you have a company that you want to sell and I'm a private equity firm. Now the price you put on your business is, let's say, $10 million. What I'm going to do is raise $1 million through my investors. That's the equity. The other $9 million I'm going to borrow from the bank. That's the leverage. Okay, so now that I have the $10 million, I'm going to buy out your company with $9 million in debt and come in and try to streamline all the aspects of that business. I'm going to make things more efficient. I'm going to lay off unproductive employees, decrease overhead. After five years, let's say that I've succeeded and now your business is worth 20 million. What I'm gonna do is pay back the bank, it's 9 million plus interest, and then split the rest between myself and the investors. This is the basic model of a leveraged buyout. How's that, Reg? So it looks like we have our first caller here. Hello, you're on with the nerd writer. What is your question? Thank you. I want to know if private equity is good or bad for the economy. See, I think I won't be able to resist voting for Mitt Romney considering how sexy he yep. is, but I'd still like to know what impact his industry has had. Well, that's a great question, Mary, and a tough one. See, these days Romney presents himself as a job creator, recently saying, We started a number of businesses, four in particular, created 120,000 jobs as of today. And there's no doubt that private equity, especially venture capitalism, an arm of private equity where firms invest in startup companies, can create jobs, especially if you make a good bet like Romney and Bain Capital did with an idea for a supermarket of office supplies, which later became staples. The problem is that streamlining, cutting the fat, can often mean job losses. And if the investment goes sour, well, everybody loses. Even you, Mary, since your accountant has invested some of your own pension fund in the deal. Well, hard capitalists like Romney say that this is a necessary risk of the system. And maybe it is. 
But the problem with the term job creators is that job creating is never the intended function of any of these private equity firms. The purpose of Bain, taken directly from its website, is to deliver industry-leading returns for its investors. To deliver the best returns. Job creation and job loss are a byproduct. And this brings me to my essential point. The essential point. It was Romney and his peers at the inception of a revolutionary new industry called leverage buyout or private equity who helped to redefine American business. See, these men saw a schism between the incentives of a company's owners, otherwise known as shareholders, and the incentives of its management. To rectify this, they acquired the companies themselves via leverage buyout, managed them themselves, and gave existing management an equity stake in the company in the form of stock or stock options. This is the beginning of huge executive compensation, which gets the goat of those Occupy protesters. The revolution is more clearly stated as the total alignment in the incentives of a company's owners, its board, and its management around stockholder value. For more on this as it relates to democracy and the recession, see vlog number four. You can find that link in the doobly. -doo. I'm afraid that's all the time we have tonight on the Nerdwriter After Dark. I do want to remind everyone that Reg is a fine guitar player and he does do all bar mitzvahs, weddings, and corporate functions. I want to wish you all a good night. May your stocks rise in the morning. And may your competitors go utterly bankrupt. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart.